Good morning. Um, I don't know if you are um, getting tired of our work on averages. We are nearly at the end. I really enjoy averages, but uh, yeah, we're nearly there. Today we're returning to the mean, just the mean today. So we've been talking about mean, median and mode, but today it's just the mean. And I want to start by working out the mean of this set of data. So someone has taken a load of packets of sweets and the sweets claim to have 60 sweets in each packet. And they opened up each packet and counted the number of sweets. I don't know if they then went on and ate them, but there we go. Uh, so rather than representing that data in a list of numbers or on a, in a frequency distribution, they've chosen to represent it in a bar chart. But we can still get the information we need. I can tell that there was one packet with 57 sweets in, no packets with 58, three packets with 59, etc., etc. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data and I'm going to turn it into a frequency distribution. So I've got number of sweets, uh, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62 and 63. And I've got frequency. I'm just going to put F for frequency. So I've got one packet had 57 sweets in. No packets had 58 sweets in. I'm going to pause and let you finish that table off for me. OK, I'm hoping you agree with me. I've just taken the height of each bar and put it into my frequency distribution. Now, I hope you'll now remember the technique for working out the mean. We need to add up all the sweets in all of these packets, but the quick way to do it is the multiplication trick, isn't it? We then need two totals. We need the total of all our sweets and we need the total number of packets and we use those to work out the mean. So again, I'm going to pause, see if you can work out the mean number of sweets in all of these packets. OK, so I've added up my totals from my multiplication sums and got 1,269. So that's all the sweets in all the packets. Make sure you've got zero there. OK, and how many packets? 21 packets. So the mean is the total of all the data divided by the number of values. 1,269 divided by 21. And as is often the case with the mean, you get a, a value with lots of decimal places. So I'm going to round it to one decimal place. Now we can now ask the question, is the manufacturer being honest when it says, on average, 60 sweets in each packet? And you could say, well, actually, yes, looking to the median, the mean is slightly above 60. So it's being, um, it's being quite generous in the way it's putting sweets in this packet. OK, let's move on to a different sort of data. OK, so this set of data is the age of or the ages, sorry, of a group of people. And um, I want to work out the mean of all of these ages. And um, we've already done um, the median of a set of ages when we used stem and leaf diagrams. But I want to work out the mean. And of course, one way I could do it would be to get out my calculator, add up all the values and divide by how many values there are. But we know that that would take a very long time and I'd be likely to make mistakes. What we have been doing is putting the data in a frequency distribution to speed it up. But can you see the problem here? When we did the survey of the number of sweets, we only had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different numbers to go in our tally chart. But how many different ages have we got here? Well, we've got loads, haven't we? We've got loads. So I could do a tally chart that has how many people have I got who are one year old, two year old, three years old, four years old, five years old, six years old, seven years old. But that tally chart would have to go all the way to 80, which is the oldest person. That would be a very long tally chart and it would be just as complicated as adding the data up in the first place. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tally this data up into groups. These are sometimes called classes. I use the word groups. And I'm using A to stand for age. So my first group is everyone between 0 and 20. And my second group is everyone between 20 and 40. And then the third group, 
and the fourth group, etc. And I've used these little inequality signs. I expect some of you are thinking crocodiles at the moment. I've used these inequality signs to define my group. So my first group, if I'm looking at from the point of view of A, A looking that way, A is bigger than zero looking that way, and it's less than or equal to 20. That's that first group. The second group starts at 20 and goes up to 40. Now, some of you will already be saying, hang on a minute. If someone is exactly 20 years old, where do I put them? Well, as it happens, we haven't got anyone who's exactly 20 years old. But the extra little line here means that this group includes exactly 20, whereas the next group only includes ages which are bigger than 20. So 20 would go in the first group, 40 in that one, 60 in that one and 80 in that one. So I'm going to tally this data up and turn it into a frequency distribution. Um, I've The attachment to today's homework just includes the bar chart from the first question, this set of data, just in case you can't see it clearly on your screen, and then the final question that I'm going to ask you to do on your own. So if you can't see it on the screen, have a look at the attachment. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick rough tally chart and then I'm going to turn that into a frequency distribution. So 30 would be in the 20 to 40 age group. 56 in the 40 to 60. I'm sure you get the hang of this. 4 is in the 0 to 20. 18 is in the 0 to 20 as well, isn't it? So I'm going to pause the video and carry that on. You carry it on for me. And then we'll put it into our frequency distribution. Okay. So I've tallied my ages up, 11 ages in the 0 to 20s, etc, etc. Um, I've done a quick check, I've added those up and they come to 50. And that's good because there are 50 ages here. So I'm relatively confident that I've got it right. So I'm going to take that and transfer it to my frequency distribution, my sort of neat copy. Now, at this point, I am going to use my multiplication trick to work out the mean. I already know I've got 50 ages, but I'm going to just do the multiplication trick to quickly add up all the ages. Ah, oh, can you see the problem? When I was doing the sweets, I had a single number here, 57, 58, 59. Now I'm dealing with a range of ages, a group of ages. So I can't do 0 to 20 times 11. That's, that's a nonsense sum. And this is the problem with data that's arranged into groups. As soon as you've lost the original data, as soon as you've got it in set of groups, you can't work out the actual mean at all because you know you've got 11 people in this age group, but you don't know how old they all were. So all we can do with grouped data is estimate the mean. It's an only an estimated mean and without the original data that's all we can do. But it is normally good enough. It is normally good enough. And we'll talk in a moment about how we can make a better estimate. So I need a single value that represents 0 to 20 and what we do is we use the middle of the groups. That seems to make sense. We're assuming that these 11 people aged between 0 and 20 some will be young, some will be nearly 20. So, you know, it's probably pretty safe to say on average they might be 10. And then 20 to 40, that's 30. 10, uh, sorry, 40 to 60, that's 50. And 70 to 80, that's 70. Now, that's just a way of estimating the ages of the people in those groups. And that's why we're saying this is an estimated mean. So we've got um, 10 times 11. That's 110. I've got 30 times 14, which is 420. I've got 50 times 17. That's 850. And I've got 70 times 8, which is 560. And then I'm quickly going to use my calculator to add those up. So I've got 110 plus 420 plus 850 plus 560 which is 1,940. So my estimated mean, 1,940, 
is the total of all my ages, well, my estimated total anyway, and that's divided by the number of ages, which is 50. So that gives me 38.8 years. So that is the average age, the mean age of everyone in my group. Well, at least it's my estimated mean. How can we get a better estimate? Well, you might be able to see that I did fairly wide groups, 0 to 20. That's a big width of age, isn't it? You know, there's a big difference between a 0 year old, a baby, and a 20 year old. So if I'd been a bit uh, cleverer and, and used groups, say, from 0 to 10 and 10 to 20 and 20 to 30 and 30 to 40, then I would have got a better estimate. The more groups you use, the better the estimate that you get. OK. I've got a survey for you now, and I'd like you to repeat the process, but there's a nasty little trick hiding. Let me show it to you. Again, you've got a copy of this data in uh, the attachment. This is, and this is genuine data. I know in the past I may have made up golf scores with me and Mr. Godba, but uh, this is genuine data. In 2016, this was the height of the tallest buildings in London. So there were 23 buildings that were between 100 and 120 metres tall. And there's only one building that was taller than 250. You may know that, that's the Shard. But the nasty trick here is, can you see how that group is 20 apart, and that group is 20 apart, and that group is 20, but this group is 40, this group is 50, and this group is 100. Now we can still use the trick that I've shown you. You've just got to be careful when you work out the middle of the group to use in the multiplication trick. So remember, here, where the group went from 0 to 20, I used the middle of the group in my multiplication trick. I did 10 times 11, and that gave me 110. The middle of the 20 to 40 group was 30. 30 times 14 gave me 420. So you've got to be careful when you work out the middle of your groups I hope you can see that I'll start you off the first group, the middle is 110, so you're going to do 110 times 23. But you've just got to be careful because not all the groups are 20 metres wide. So your challenge is to find the mean height of the tallest buildings in London. It's only going to be an estimated mean because we're, we've only got the data arranged into groups. But I've attached the solution, so once you've had a go, see if you want to, uh, see if you check the solution and see if you got it right. I hope you're all well. Take care.